Hello YouTube and welcome back to NTRX on Gaming. This is Cradle and today we're going to be continuing the story. Uh, Ida, which is our new friend, who also happens to be a flower vase, asked us to connect her to this terminal right here, I think. Uh, that's what our quest says, help Ida connect to the web. And to do this, I need, I need to find batteries. So I'm going to look around, try to find some batteries. I don't know how many I need, uh, but is that one? Oh, hey, here's one. Here's one right here. Awesome. Okay, so what do I do with this? Do I just put it in? No. How do I'm sure it's not that simple. All right, so let's find all of the batteries first, and then we're going to uh, possibly continue the story. So I just found the second battery. It's actually right here next to the yurt, and it is behind that little... Um, nest not nest but perch where the bird always lands so this is the second battery and i think i may need one more oh and i found the third one all right the third one is also right behind the earth by the wheelbarrow right here and you take it and i think i just have to place them in this box which basically what this does is it connects uh or it powers up the antenna which is right here so i think this is what i have to do is just put them in a the box and this will give us internet access Let's go back to the yurt and find out if this worked. I think it did. Help I to connect to the web. Install a solar battery on the... Okay, I have to install the solar battery. And to do this, I need to do what? Oh, the solar battery was actually right here. I picked it up earlier. It was right by that box. So I do need to put it up somewhere. Where would that be? Would that be here? No, it would not be here at all. It would possibly be here. Not here either. Now, it would make sense to probably install it somewhere on the roof though. So let's actually see if there's anywhere on the roof where we can place it. Oh, that looks like a solar power thingy, my jig, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay, excellent. So solar power connected, batteries, antenna. Now what? Remote to switch on the terminal. Use the remote. I guess that's probably inside the earth, or yurt as it's known. Uh, is that it? No, that's not it. Oh, there it is! I finally found it. It was oh my god! This was I would never have found this if I didn't look here. Why did it have to be so difficult? The reason is both simple and evident. Cool. Simultaneous existence of two copies of the same person gives rise to problems we are not prepared to tackle as clearly demonstrated by the sorrowful experience of the recent past. For now, strict prohibition on duplication and forced deactivation of existing duplicates remain the only solution to the situation. Deactivated neurocopies are retired into secure storage facilities for likely reactivation in the future when a legitimate solution is found. This is one of the cases when... Okay, something broke. So this remote was the, probably the hardest thing I had to find in this game so far. That was, that was ridiculous. Why would they even put it there? Uh, okay, so I guess I have to talk to her again. Ida, our terminal burned down. I know, but I managed to check the number in time. You did? So what's the news? Are you going home? The news is bad. I no longer have originals right. There's nowhere for me to go. Why? I was restored. Three years ago, Ida Meyer was confirmed dead and restored from a reserve neurocopy. She currently lives somewhere in Geneva. We don't seem to have much luck. How did she die? It says here, died in a disparatoxin emission in 2058. This means you are now a duplicate? Correct. My very existence is illegal. Well, don't fret. We'll improvise. Improvise? Sure. We'll find you a normal body with legs. With legs. And then? Then we'll live our lives, selling flowers. Benedish, listen. When my battery runs out, I want you to put my flowers into secure warranty. I mean, into a glass cell, yes? That is a secure evacuation. I understand. What? What I mean is... Please put my neurochip in a cell which, enemish, into a camera of times, or a camera of dreams. 
What's with your voice? I don't know. A camera of tides? What are you talking about? I'm malfunctioning somehow. My thoughts are out of order. But I think it's over. You need repairs. I don't need anything, Inhibitch. I'll be put to sleep soon. Disconnected. And for a long while, I bet. So, you've decided? Yes. That is my decision. So you wake up and go right back to sleep. Got it. More like, wake up, get totally confused, then go back to sleep. What are you confused about? The explosion, for one thing. I haven't a clue how I'm connected to it. You got caught in an emission. That's just bad luck. No, Enibish, it's not that simple. I found another mention of my name, here, in the database, in the search history. Somebody was searching for information about me. So what? What's so strange about that? The fact that it was the only query for my name in the entire search history, made 20 minutes before the explosion. Who made the query? A man named Mark. Mark Daring. He's listed as transfer operator. The explosion happened on his shift. There's even a recording of it. And also... How curious. What? Going by the recording, there was an equipment breakdown not long before the explosion, at around the same time the query was made. Yes, I want to know what happened there. What kind of a recording is it? A report. It was saved automatically. It mentions some kind of a malfunction that, because it wasn't corrected in time, forced a modification in the transfer procedure. And no, I don't know the nature of the modification. I haven't yet figured it out. Why do you even care? Is that really important now? It is to me. Because aside from these fragments of the past, I have more fragments of the past than... I mean... Ida. Hey. It happened again. I'm getting worse. I'll repeat. You need repairs. You need to know the cause of the problem before you can correct it, which I do not. Could it be those processing errors you've mentioned? Which errors? You know, the ones that accumulate over time. Impossible. I've just rebooted myself. They don't accumulate so quickly. Something else is happening here. Your voice is changing. If only it were just the voice. I'm at a loss. The reasons could be many. Could be my synchronizer is on the fritz. I've heard of cases when the neurochip malfunctioned due to a deteriorating link with the DNA. Either that or my neurocopy is failing. But if that's the case... What then? Nothing. Let's just hope it's the synchronizer. Let's. Then we'll replace it with a new one. Sure. There's a new one here in the small. Distance close. Give me the pavilion number. I'll go and get it. Is... In six rooms soft. Got it. And, um, don't go crazy just yet. Try. Try. Yes. Okay, so the story uh, is getting super complex. So apparently, apparently, according to her, there was someone that... Oh, first of all, she's actually a copy of a, of a real person that has already been resurrected. So she's technically an illegal... Uh, illegal android, so she would be kind of destroyed if someone found out that she exists. But the cool thing about it is that someone actually searched for her right before she was uh, killed in this explosion in the pavilion. So she's gonna find out if there was a conspiracy, and to 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 find the conspiracy or to help her find the conspiracy, we actually have to go get another part for her because something's wrong with her voice. So let's, let's go back to the pavilion. I, I believe there's going to be another mini game, and we're going to have to get another part for her. She told me it was pavilion six, uh, but I think it's broken. Nothing works here. I should try the button before. It doesn't work. So I gotta have to figure out the way. Oh, yeah, it says out of order. Find another way of reaching the pavilion. I may have to actually go up here. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, let's, we're gonna go up here and see if we can maybe jump over or something. Because we're going right there. 
And to get there, we have to do what? All right, so right behind the pavilion four, there's this passage that I just found that you can actually use to walk across, but I keep falling down all the time. I have to be really super careful. Super careful. Ah, I fell down again. Darn. I think you actually die if you fall. Because the game kind of just starts over from here. I figured out what kind of breakdown the report was referring to. Yeah? During a transfer, the ability to speak was not blocked out for one of the kids. That is, he was talking to himself. To his own copy. That is kind of creepy. So, while the kid was being copied, he was awake and talking to himself as android. That is creepy and wrong on so many levels. Okay, I have to make this jump finally. I'm gonna make it! Yay! Alright, here we go. Oh, there's more holes, seriously? I keep falling every time. This is probably the most difficult part of this particular quest. It's getting across. Ugh! So annoying. Oh my god, after like a million tries, I finally made it. I see you. Go on in. So this is probably the most annoying part of the game where you just have to make sure you don't fall through those holes because otherwise you have to start from scratch from the bottom. Anyway, I think I'm gonna pause this here. Thank you guys for watching. We'll continue this in the next part and give you later. Bye bye. Hello YouTube and welcome to Interaction Gaming. This is Cradle and we've just won yet another part in this mini game, and we're going to be continuing the story as I believe I just won uh, a new voice box for our little friend. So we're going to return this to her and then find out what actually happened with the kids. And I just realized it's actually nighttime in here. So I was right, the, there's something different every time you come out of those um, puzzle rooms. Okay, so I think I have to return the voice box to her and then she's gonna find out a little bit more about the kids and about what happened to her and why the explosion occurred in this amusement park which also happens to be a clinic for for sick kids and this is, looks, looks a little bit different at night a lot more beautiful actually and the door is once again locked i don't know who keeps closing the door but definitely not me did you bring it yep i did Hold on while I replace it. I believe I do the same thing. Turn this off. Remove. Uh, where would that be? Here? Okay. And put this in. Replace the thing. Not like that at all. Come on. And turn the button. Anytime? Anytime? Well? It's fine. Thoughts still messed up? No. Everything's fine. Then it helped. For now. We'll see if it lasts. How long will your charge last? About two weeks, maybe less. Say, know what I found? The correspondence of that operator, Mark, with one of his colleagues. There are some strange tidbits here. Here, listen to this. To be honest, it doesn't really interest me. Wait, this is important. It's about your parents. What? Your parents. And me as well. Here, listen. It's a work correspondence. They're talking about research into memory transfer between people using telepathy. Telepathy? That's what it says here. They're discussing telepathy and also mention some kind of side effect. They refer to it as MPR zero, the MPR zero effect. What is it? Well, if my understanding is correct, it's a sensation, a strange sensation experienced when one transmits one's memory. And what of it? Mark writes that at one time he was very interested in the matter, studying MPR zero thoroughly after that incident with Ida. That incident? We must have been acquainted. Even though I remember nothing about Mark or any unusual effects. 
and I cannot imagine what incident he's referring to. And what about my parents? That's here too. He recalls working at a research station before the garden was constructed. There weren't many people around in those days. His circle of contacts was limited to several work colleagues and his Mongolian friends. He writes, it's the family living in a yurt not far from the landing platform. That's your family, isn't it? Sounds like it. Where are your parents now? They died long ago. Why? They could have probably answered many of our questions. Maybe Mark- Are you alright? Yes, maybe. Maybe he told them. Ida, is everything fine? Everything fine is an ordinary word. Just a note. Like the weather, chilly or warm, but we were looking for other research. Family records, kind letters, so... What was that just now? More of the same? Yes. Again. Ennebish. What? I don't think I have much time. Please, help me untangle this web with Mark. I want you to look through your parents' things. They may have left behind notes, journals. Understood. I will go look for them. Tabaha is here. Interesting. So definitely a conspiracy going on. And Tabaha might know more. Where is, where is he at? Uh, let's go ask him and possibly get more information about both our parents and also Ida and her situation. Um, so if you weren't following this, she basically said that she was um, it was her first day at work and the parents of the main character were involved in this and it sounds like she died on her first day of work. <laughs> you look different again. Looks like it'll rain. Rain? Today? There'll be rain and thunder, and it'll sweep all profiteers into a ditch. What happened? You got any idea how much the search cost me? No. How much? One and a half. Is that a lot? Well, when and by Hungor has the internet ever cost one and a half? I'll pay you back. I won't take money from your destitute self. All right. Thanks. The information was paid for and delivered by a personal courier. Very nice. So, what did you find out? Well, first of all, the Gebera Garden was never about entertainment. It was a hospital, I know. But what happened to it? The kids were all patients, yeah? Well, one of them had his container overflow. The passim exploded. That's what happened. That's all? Hold your horses. The story ain't so simple. Think. A person gets his body replaced and blows up minutes later. You might ask, how could they not have checked the container? Turns out they did check, and the container was empty. And yet, 15 minutes later, it up and explodes. In other words, the capsule filled and overflowed rapidly. Pretty much instantly, in point of fact. There must have been a reason. Must have been, sure, but it wasn't found. All that's known is that there was a mishap with this particular child's transfer. Turns out he had been talking to himself while in the booth. That was the mishap. As to why he blew up, that part's unclear. When he came outside, all his stats were normal, and he looked calm. You can see it on the video. He was talking to himself? What about, I wonder? Nobody knows. The conversation wasn't safe. What's the video you mentioned? From the security cameras. You can see everything. Here he is, coming out of the booth in an M-body. Here's the sword acceptance ceremony. Here he is, getting off the stage and heading into the garden. He's walking evenly, takes a seat on the edge of a flower bed, then this part is a bit unclear. What's happening? A child comes up to him as he's sitting. A teeny little thing. Walks up and says something to him. Looks like the kid fancies the sword and is asking for it. What sword? A toy. Just a shiny toy sword. They were given to the kids as presents after their body replacements. Endure a transfer, get a toy. Okay. Okay. So our hero hands over the sword. 
He's holding on to the hilt, hand extended. The child is trying to take the sword, but can't. Why can't he? Because he's grabbing at the blade, which is holographic. The kiddo's fingers swish right through the air, through the illusion. I see. And then what happens? Then, nothing happens. It's the end of the recording. The explosion is coming up. Here's a grown-up approaching the kids. That's the transfer operator. He walks up to his patient and asks him something. The latter turns around and blows up a second later. And that's it. Doesn't clear up much, I'm afraid. What was his name? Mark, or who are you asking about? The one who blew up? That was Albert. And the other child? The little one? Don't know. He was one of the locals. Not sure how he ended up inside the garden. Oh, I wonder if that was us. That could have been us, actually. Uh... Have fun with your little mystery now, but I'm off. Because I think uh, 18 years ago, the main character would have been seven years old. So, or around seven. So it might have been actually him. See you tomorrow? I don't know. It might be three, four days, maybe a week. We'll see. All right, take care now. Don't get caught in the rain. Hold on, Tabaha. I've got one more question. I told you everything I know about this garden. I got nothing else. It's not about the garden. It's about my parents. I wanted to remember something about my parents. Here. What's this? A key to the drawer of your Grandpa Botchin's bedside table. Where did you get it? Botchin left it to me. He said that if ever you ask me about your parents, to give you this key. So, that's what I'm doing. And I don't know nothing else. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tabaha. Alright, so it looks like this key is to open that locked drawer that I saw earlier. Uh, and this will probably, or hopefully, answer a few more questions for us. Alright, I believe it's this place right here. There we go. So what's inside? What is this? Flashlight attachment. Let's take it. Uh, what else is here? Passport in the name of Bajin Dalha, receipt for square retire. Bajin with wife. Train tickets. Extinct insect stamp. Uh, celebration over Mongolian Buddhist Association blessing the body replacement program. Okay, journal. Uh, Grandpa Bajin's journal. On the inside are several brief notes. The two pages split by the bookmark are dense with text. It's a message for Anavish. I'll read all the entries. Well, well, now the home my, of my son is empty. So fate has decided. I'm not complaining either. Providence knows best. And that's left for me to pray, uh, is to pray for them. I'll head out in the morning. It's over 200 miles. Better not forget a gas canister. It'll be dark when I get there. Uh, the wake will go on all night. And come morning, I'll be gone, leaving everything as is. Providence has got a plan, to be sure, in which my role is a modest one. As for the baby, of course, I'll take care of him. I'll take care of him. I'll take him with me to Ulaanbaatar. Uh, I'm not so easily scared. Then... No use guessing now. These parts won't let him go. No doubt about it. Ev evidently, we're destined to live here. What uh, option are there? Only abandon him and that it that I will not do. He won't drink milk, he won't eat anything. What do I feed him now? He's growing so fast. Isn't it early for a two week old child to walk on his own feet? And where did he go at night? Oh, so that was me going at night to that dude before he exploded. I can't figure out what it is he'd found. Some kind of a device. Three days now he's been playing with it, dragging it through the dust, gnawing at it. I suppose he's teething. He stopped growing, hasn't changed in a week. Five-year-old child is walking around the yurt. Keep walking, son. Your appearance doesn't scare me. But how is it that you look so much like him? I guess that's not for me to know. Providence has got a plan, in which my role is a modest one. My job is to pray. The, an air shadow flew by yesterday. It's been a long time since we've seen one. I couldn't make out any people inside. Could, could be it's used as a freight? 
Uh, what a meeting, praise providence, your reckless soul. If it weren't for Anubish, you Tabaha would still be lying in that flower bed. But it's a solid money making idea, the passage is free. She's always good, the tires on the square of one need replacing, I'm gonna sell it. No more notes, only in the letters left. Uh, okay, I guess it starts here. Anabish, if you're reading this letter, that means your curiosity has led you into the past to your forebears. Your parents' belongings are locked away in chests. I will give you the key with which to open them, but know this, no things will give you the answers until you've asked yourself the right question. Of all the possible paths, only one will lead you to this question. Find this one true path and may my modest assistance, assistance ease your search. You will need a ray of phantom light to illuminate your path and a wise clue to make the right decision at a crossroads. In this drawer lies a rounded object. Use it to obtain the ray of light. In a book of wisdom, you'll find a clue. Then go to my grave, stand on the largest stone and take a look around using the ray of light. Look carefully and you'll see the spot from which to begin your path. A clue and a ray of light. I'll try to find them. Alright, awesome. So we got some clues and it sounds like it's going to be another search puzzle. And we're going to continue this in the next part. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and game you later. Bye bye.